In this week's weekly funny story jokes, we bring you our best funny story joke compilation of the week. These funny story jokes are sure to make you laugh, from the first one to the last one. These are our story jokes which we love to generate. This week, we bring you five story jokes, starting with a story about three miners lying to get a job, until we finish with a hilarious story about two priests. Please watch to the end, as we keep the best one for last. So, sit back, get the popcorn, and get ready to laugh until your stomach aches. In our first funny story joke of the day, we bring you three lying miners looking for a job. In today's uproarious comedy story joke, we unravel a joke that's as amusing as a sitcom finale. This story isn't your average tale. It's a rib-tickling saga brimming with twists and turns that'll have you chuckling like a comedy special on Netflix. So settle in, get ready to laugh, and brace yourself for a humorous narrative that promises to keep you grinning from ear to ear. In a dusty corner of Nevada, nestled between the tumbleweeds of Eureka, and the glowing lights of Tonopah. A trio of eager souls spotted a newspaper ad calling for miners. It was a call to adventure, a chance to turn dusty dreams into golden realities. With grit in their eyes and determination in their hearts, they packed their gear and hit the open road for their shot at mining glory. First up was a smooth-talking lad from Virginia City known far and wide for his ability to spin a tail thicker than the pines in Tahoe. He swaggered into the interview room where a grizzled interviewer from Tonopah greeted him with a straight shooting question. Ever worked in a mine? Absolutely. Our lad beamed confidently. I've spent my days digging deep in the mines around Eureka. The interviewer's brow furrowed, skepticism written across his face like graffiti on a ghost town wall. Eureka? Son. There's little more there than tumbleweeds and casinos. The mines, they're over in Tonopah. Crestfallen, our lad shuffled out of the room, muttering to his mates. Note to self, Eureka ain't where the gold's at. Next in line was a sturdy fella from Elko, a man whose veins practically ran with desert sand and silver dust. You ever been underground? Queried the interviewer, eyes sharp as a knife in a poker game. You betcha. I've worked the shafts around Tonopah, the Elko man declared proudly. Impressive nodded the interviewer, leaning in with a hint of intrigue. How deep did you go? With a glint in his eye, the Elko man replied, Oh, about 200 to 300 meters, I reckon. The interviewer's face darkened like a thundercloud over the Sierra Nevadas. Son, those mines plunge deeper than the Grand Canyon. You might want to recalibrate that claim. Disheartened, our Elko lad emerged from the interview room, shaking his head in disbelief. Remember, he cautioned his buddies, in Tonopah, they measure depths like they measure sunsets, long and deep. Last to strut into the room was a fella straight out of Goldfield, his grin as wide as Hoover Dam and a glimmer of hope shining brighter than Vegas lights. You ever dig for ore? Asked the interviewer, a hint of curiosity dancing in his weathered eyes. Sure have. Spent my days in Tonopah digging deep, two to three kilometers deep. The Goldfield man replied with a confidence that echoed through the room. The interviewer perked up, impressed by the bold claim. All right, last question, he said, leaning forward with a gleam of challenge. What type of headlamps did you use in the mine? The man scratched his head, considering his response carefully. A smile spread across his face as he chuckled softly. Well, sir, we don't need those we were strictly day shift kind of folk. In our second funny story joke of the week, we bring you an angry mother. In today's funny story joke, prepare yourself for an uproarious tale of comedy and misadventure. This story will have you in fits of laughter as we follow the hilarious encounter of a female leprechaun and a bus driver. Get ready for a joke that's not just funny, 
but a comedy masterpiece that promises to keep you giggling all the way through. In the quaint town of Letterkenny, nestled among rolling green hills and babbling brooks, lived a feisty female leprechaun named Fiona. Fiona was known throughout the town for her quick wit, fiery temper, and her newborn baby boy, Joe. Little Joe was an unusual baby, even by leprechaun standards, with bright green hair that stood on end like a pot of shamrocks just after a good watering, and a mischievous glint in his emerald eyes. One sunny morning, brighter than a freshly polished pot of gold, Fiona decided to take Joe on a trip across town to visit her sister Moira. Moira, bless her nimble fingers, had promised to knit Joe a special leprechaun baby bonnet, complete with tiny shamrock ear flaps and a golden tassel that would jingle merrily with every kick little Joe gave. Fiona, with Joe nestled snugly in her sling, a repurposed rainbow that shimmered in the sunlight, made her way down the cobbled path towards the bus stop. The rhythmic click-clack of her tiny leather boots echoed against the stone, punctuated by the occasional gurgle from Joe, who seemed particularly interested in the world unfolding before him. A world filled with buzzing bumblebees, plump ladybugs, and the occasional grumpy badger waddling out for his morning constitutional. The bus soon arrived with a screech that could wake the dead, or at least a particularly lazy banshee, and a puff of exhaust that smelled suspiciously like burnt clover. The doors hissed open, revealing a cramped interior and a driver who looked like he'd been marinating in a vat of vinegar for far too long. His permanent scowl could sour a vat of the finest fermented leprechaun ale at 20 paces, and his bushy eyebrows seemed perpetually furrowed in a state of disapproval. Fiona, ever the picture of feisty confidence, marched onto the bus, her head held high. As she fished out her bus fare, a single, shimmering gold coin that winked mischievously in the dim light and handed it to the driver, the grumpy fellow glanced at Joe and let out a disdainful snort that could have cleared a room full of cobwebs. Ugh, that's the ugliest baby I've ever seen. He muttered loud enough for everyone to hear. Fiona's eyes widened in shock. Her cheeks flushed with anger, and she could feel steam practically coming out of her ears, like a kettle about to whistle. Without a word, she stormed down the aisle, her tiny leprechaun feet stomping like a drum roll. She plopped into an empty seat with such force that the cushion squeaked in protest. She was seething with rage, her mind buzzing with a thousand comebacks. How dare that driver insult her precious Joe? The nerve. If she had magic on her side, she'd have turned him into a toadstool right then and there. But this funny story ain't over just yet, and Fiona's anger was just getting started. Her fury was boiling over like a pot of Irish stew left unattended. Sitting next to her was a kind-looking man with a twinkle in his eye, who noticed her distress. What's wrong? He asked, genuinely concerned. That driver just insulted me. Fiona fumed, her voice shaking with anger. The man raised an eyebrow and gave her a reassuring smile. You shouldn't take that. You tell him off. Go ahead. I'll hold your monkey. In our third funny story joke of the week, we bring you the secret to getting old. In today's funny story joke, prepare yourself for an uproarious tale of longevity, love, and laughter. This story will have you chuckling as we explore the hilarious secret behind an elderly couple's extraordinary health. Get ready for a joke that's not just funny, but a comedy masterpiece that promises to keep you giggling all the way through. Nestled amongst rolling green hills and babbling brooks lay the quaint village of Evergreen Creek. Here, time seemed to move at a gentler pace the only hustle and bustle reserved for the occasional squirrel scampering for acorns. But amidst the serene meadows and cobbled streets resided a couple who defied all logic. 
William and Martha Buttercup. William, a spry 102-year-old with a shock of white hair that defied gravity, and Martha, a radiant 98 with a smile that could melt glaciers, were the talk of the town. Their secret? Not some miracle potion or a pact with a mischievous leprechaun. No, the source of their youthful vigor was a tale so hilariously eccentric it could make a grumpy badger chuckle. One sunny afternoon, a curious tourist named Harold wandered into Evergreen Creek. He'd heard whispers of the sprightly centenarians and was determined to unravel their secret. He found William chopping firewood, his shirt sculpted to an enviable physique by a lifetime of hard work. Beads of sweat glistened on his brow, but his movements were as smooth as a seasoned lumberjack half his age. Harold, a portly man with a penchant for pastries, approached William cautiously. Excuse me, sir. I couldn't help but notice your remarkable energy. Are you the guy they are talking about that is 102 years old? William, with a twinkle in his eye, chuckled. That's precisely the number, young fellow. That might be a bit of a stretch for you. Harold, momentarily stung but determined, continued. Wow, you look amazing. What's your secret? William, wiping his brow with the back of his hand, winked. Ah, well, that's a story for another time. Perhaps you'd like to help me carry this load inside. A bit heavy for these old bones, you see. Harold, eager to unlock the secret to eternal youth, or at least a slightly less winded climb to his third floor apartment, readily agreed. They hoisted the wood and headed towards a charming cottage nestled amongst blooming roses. Inside, William settled into a rocking chair, the worn leather creaking a gentle welcome. Now, where were we? Ah yes, the secret to my, shall we say, sprightly demeanor? Harold leaned forward, practically vibrating with anticipation. Yes, yes, please tell me. William chuckled again, a rich rumbling sound like distant thunder is. You see, young fellow, Martha and I have been married for 75 years. Now we have our disagreements like any couple, of course. But instead of sulking or shouting, we made a little pact. Harold, captivated, nodded eagerly. Every time we have an argument, William continued, a sly grin spreading across his face. The loser, the one who started the squabble, must run five kilometers. Harold's eyes widened. Five kilometers? Every time they argued? The man must be a marathon champion. But, William continued, noticing Harold's bewildered expression. Seeing as we have a fairly lively marriage, and I am usually the one starting the argument. William grinning. I've been running those five kilometers almost every single day for 75 years. But this funny story is not just over yet. Harold's jaw nearly hit the floor. No wonder William looked like he could wrestle a bear. But then, a niggling thought arose. But if that's the case... Harold stammered. How come your wife, Martha, is in such incredible shape too? William's smile widened into a mischievous grin. Well... He said, a mischievous glint in his eye. She usually runs after me with a rolling pin, hollering for me to pick up the pace and finish those five kilometers. <laughs> in our fourth funny story joke of the week, we bring you a priest and a nun having to share a room for the night. In today's funny story joke, we travel to the quaint village of Ballymore, nestled between rolling green hills, where two dedicated souls, Father Patrick and Sister Mary, found themselves in an uproarious situation. After a long day at the seminary, their car broke down, leading to an unforgettable night filled with comedy. Get ready for a hilarious twist that will have you laughing out loud. In the quaint, sleepy village of Ballymore, Nestled between rolling hills and ancient trees, a priest named Father Patrick 
and a nun named Sister Mary were returning from a long day at the seminary. The sky was beginning to darken, and a gentle mist was rising from the fields, giving the landscape an ethereal glow. As they drove along the winding country road, the car began to sputter and cough, finally giving out altogether. Father Patrick sighed and pulled the car to the side of the road. Well, sister, it looks like we're stranded until morning. The nearest garage won't open until then. Sister Mary nodded, her eyes scanning the darkening horizon. It seems we'll need to find a place to stay for the night. After a short walk, they found a cozy little bed and breakfast, its windows glowing warmly in the evening light. The sign read, The Restful Haven, and it looked like the perfect place to spend the night. They approached the innkeeper, an elderly woman with a kind smile, who informed them that only one room was available. Father Patrick and Sister Mary exchanged a glance, both thinking the same thing. This would be an interesting night. Father Patrick hesitated for a moment before saying, Sister, I don't think the Lord would object if we spent the night sharing this one room. I'll sleep on the sofa and you can have the bed. Sister Mary considered this and then agreed. I think that would be fine, Father. They prepared for bed, each saying their nightly prayers with the solemnity befitting their station, though the absurdity of the situation wasn't lost on either of them. The room was small but comfortable, with a single bed that looked like it had seen better days and a modest sofa that seemed to have a slight tilt to one side. Father Patrick, ever the gentleman, insisted on taking the sofa. As he stretched out on it, the sofa let out a groan louder than an old church organ. It creaked and squeaked with every minor adjustment he made, sounding almost as if it were giving a running commentary on his every move. He finally found a position that seemed somewhat stable and let out a sigh of relief, which was immediately followed by another loud creak from the sofa, as if in response. Sister Mary, on the other hand, settled into the bed, pulling the covers up to her chin with a shiver. She glanced over at Father Patrick, who was still wrestling with the rebellious sofa, and couldn't help but smile. The bed was cozy enough, though it had a slight dip in the middle that made her feel like she was being gently folded in half. They exchanged a look across the room, the kind that old friends share when they're both in on the funny joke, and each tried to stifle their giggles. The bed and the sofa seemed to be in a contest of which could make the most noise, and it was a close race. Ten minutes passed, and Sister Mary whispered into the darkness, Father, I'm very cold. Father Patrick, ever the gentleman, replied, It's okay, sister. I'll get a blanket from the cupboard. He got up, fetched a blanket, and gently laid it over her. Another ten minutes passed, and Sister Mary spoke again. Father, I'm still terribly cold. Father Patrick sighed but remained patient. Don't worry, sister. I'll get up and fetch you another blanket. He got up once more, retrieved another blanket from the cupboard, and placed it over her. But hold on there, as this funny story joke ain't over just yet. Another ten minutes went by, and the room was filled with a heavy silence, save for the occasional rustle of the blankets. Then, in a voice barely above a whisper, Sister Mary murmured, Father, I'm still very cold. I don't think the Lord would mind if we acted as man and wife just for this one night. Father Patrick was silent for a moment, his mind racing with the implications of her suggestion. Then, with a twinkle of mischief in his eye, he replied, You're right, sister. Get your own blankets. <laughs> In our last funny story joke of the week, we bring you two young priests having to paint a room. But before we go, we would like to thank you so much for watching our funny story joke compilation. If you like this type of videos, then please press the subscribe and the bell icon. This way you will get notified when we publish new content. Here we go with our last funny story joke of the week. In today's funny story joke, 
Prepare yourself for an uproarious tale of comedy and misadventure. This story will have you in fits of laughter as we follow the hilarious predicament of two new priests given an unusual task by their chief priest. Get ready for a joke that's not just funny, but a comedy masterpiece that promises to keep you giggling all the way through. In the heart of America, nestled among towering oak trees and lush green fields, lay the esteemed St. Benedict's Seminary. This grand institution was renowned for its rigorous training and the peculiar sense of humor of its chief priest, Father O'Malley. Fresh off the bus from their small hometowns, two eager new priests, Father Tom and Father Mike, found themselves standing before Father O'Malley, who had a twinkle of mischief in his eye. Welcome to St. Benedict's, gentlemen. Father O'Malley greeted them. Your first task is a simple one. Paint your room. But there's a catch. You must do it without getting a single drop of paint on your clothes. Father Tom and Father Mike exchanged puzzled glances. How were they supposed to accomplish such a feat? After a moment of thought, Father Tom's eyes lit up with a spark of inspiration. Hey, let's take all our clothes off, fold them up and lock the door. Father Tom suggested with a grin. Father Mike hesitated, but the logic was sound. With no clothes, there would be no risk of getting paint on them. So, with a mix of excitement and nervous laughter, they stripped down, folded their clothes neatly in the corner, and locked the door. Naked as the day they were born, they picked up their paintbrushes and got to work. Father Timothy, usually stoic, did a jig that would shame a leprechaun, paintbrush in hand. Father Bartholomew, ever the joker, hummed a hilariously off-key tune, occasionally flicking paint at Timothy with the precision of a drunken squirrel. Their laughter echoed through the halls, transforming the once quiet seminary into a monastery of mirth. The room, once a beige wasteland, morphed into a vibrant blue canvas under their questionable artistic touch. Father Timothy attempted a fresco, but his creation resembled a toddler's finger painting project more than Michelangelo's masterpiece. Father Bartholomew, seizing the opportunity for mischief, added a bushy mustache to a portrait of a stern-faced priest, sending them both into a fit of giggles so violent they nearly choked on their laughter. But this funny story joke ain't over yet. Just as they were finishing the final touches, there was a loud knock at the door. Both priests froze, their hearts pounding in their chests. Who is it? Father Mike called out, trying to keep his voice steady. Blind woman! came the reply from the other side of the door. The priests exchanged bewildered looks. A blind woman? What were the odds? Father Tom shrugged and said, She's blind, she can't see. What could it hurt? Reluctantly, they unlocked the door and let her in. The woman stepped into the room, tapping her cane lightly on the floor. She was petite, with a kind face framed by silver hair and she moved with a confident grace that belied her blindness. Good afternoon, fathers. She greeted them cheerfully. Nice pecs. Where do you want me to hang the blinds? <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>